There's our call to worship. We're going to sing a song to start off this morning, and it requires pulling out your Hebrew tongue. Will you say, Hine Matov? Hine Matov. Again, Hine Matov. Hine Matov. Umana. <laughs> you can help Uma me out with naim. this one. <laughs> say it again, Elizabeth. Uma Naim. Thank you. Uma Naim. Shevet, Shevet, Achim, Achim, Gam, Yachad. Yachad. All right, okay, okay. Well, we'll see how you do. Okay, how many of you are glad to be here today? Yeah. Amen, amen, it's good to be here today. Hey, maybe we could have you guys, okay, now I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some instructions, okay? I want you guys to greet each other, but I also want you to li listen up because I want you to come back together, you know what I mean? <laughs> So why don't you greet each other and uh, give each other a uh, good to see you today.
Okay, maybe we can kind of start coming back together now. And maybe I could have some men up here to hold the tallit for the blessing of the children as well. Can I get some of the guys up here to hold the tallit for the blessing of the children? Looks like we may need to have a second to lead. Can we get everyone under there. glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of Yahweh, our Lord. There was a series of songs that the people would sing on their way to the house. And it's Psalms 120 through 134. And a lot of the songs this morning are derived from that. So as we enter into his presence, as we enter and come into his house, let's be mindful of where we are entering and how we come in through the covering of the shed blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. First, let's cry out to him. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. It is a cry of my heart to follow you. It is a cry of my heart to be close to you. It is a cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. Teach me your holy ways, your way, so I can walk in your truth. Teach me your holy ways, your way, and make me wholly devoted to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. Open my eyes so I can see the wonderful things that you do. Open my heart up more and more and make it wholly devoted to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart 
face of my life. My life, all of the days of my life. Yes. Our help is in the name, the name of Yahweh. Our help is in the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is in the name, the name of Yahweh. Our help is in the maker of heaven and earth. Oh, let Israel say, Our help is in the name, the name of Yahweh. Our help is in the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is in the name. Name of Yahweh, our help is in the maker of heaven and earth. Oh, let Israel say, if Yahweh had not been on our side, we would be swept away by water from the enemy. If Yahweh had not been on our side, we would be caught like a bird in a snare, but oh, your way is fair. Our help is in the name, in the name of Yahweh. Our help is in the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is in the name, in the name of Yahweh. Our help is in the maker of heaven and earth. swept away by water from the enemy, if Yahweh had not been on our side, we would be caught like a bird in a snare, but oh, Yahweh is there, our help is in the name, name of Yahweh. i
isn't a sweat. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. Thousands elsewhere.
Yeah. 
Father, we just come before you and we just thank you for
Hello. My praise report is uh, tomorrow will be me and my wife's 17th anniversary. And I just want to thank Yahweh for giving me the most beautiful wife I could ever have. Thank you.
that, that they, they actually, there was also some interpretation problems there, and they couldn't make up their mind on what a specific word said, whether it, whether it was um, a man called or, or, or a, a Jewish or grown, and so that became an issue there. But it wasn't specific, it still was in key. Now, the reason that I believe that that is so significant is this.
stirs up the people, teaches throughout all of Judea from Galilee, wherever this part of Jesus is here. When Pilate heard this, he, he asked if the man was a Galilean. Finding that he, he, was, he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem during those days. Herod was very glad to see uh, Yeshua for, for a long time. Now, this is important, okay? This is hugely important. 
and what he was saying. So I want to go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Now we're going to get more into Daniel a little bit later, but I want to just read verse 14. This is Daniel's vision of the, of the, of the nature of days and the sun of man. Verse 14 says, He was given authority, talking about the sun of man, He was given authority to rule and glory in the kingdom so that those of every people, nation, and language should serve Him. His dominion is everlasting dominion that, that will never pass away. And his kingdom is one that will, be, will not be destroyed. Okay. That passage in Daniel identifies the one that holds the kingdom, the one sets on the throne to win the kingdom. That's who? The son of man. So when he, when, when Yeshua had, had healed this man, or uh, forgiven him of sin, the first question that came up is, you're blaspheming because you do not have the right to forgive sin. And he, he just had to answer the assignment, if you will, because his comment was, is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? Just to show you that the Son of Man has authority. And he is taking away sin from the power. That's the one where we go, oh, Yeah. 
started at verse 11. So Mary stood outside, this is a good uh, we read the rest of the days ago. So Mary stood outside facing the tomb crying. And as she was crying, she stooped and looked into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting. One at, one at the head and one at the feet, where the two of the bodies had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my master, he told us to him. And I don't know where they have been taken. Having said this, she turned around and saw Yeshua standing there, though she did not know what it was he did. Woman, Yeshua said to her, Why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you remove Tell me where you put him, and I will take, take him away. Yeshua said, Mary. Turning around, she saw, she said to him, and to him in Hebrew, the one with whom he was speaking. Go cling to me, Yeshua told her, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and tell them that I have ascended to my Father and your Father, my offspring and your offspring. In this passage, we find Mary Magdalene uh, at, at, the, at the grave site. She's crying because she thinks that someone has taken away the body of Yeshua. When Yeshua appears to her, she, she takes the caretaker of, the, of that area. And when, when Yeshua says her, her name, she recognizes him and turns to take the Holy Spirit. Now, this, it, this would have been, okay, now listen to me. This would have been a very, very important time. Number one, it wasn't about making the Sabbath on Sunday. But it was a Sunday. Do you want to start? Turn with me. The Leviticus. The Leviticus. These are the appointed feasts, the Moedim of Yahweh, holy convocations which you are to proclaim in their appointed season. During the first month, on the 14th day of the month, in the evening, is the Pesach of Yahweh. On the 15th day of the same month is the feast of Matzot to Yahweh. For seven days you are to eat matzah. On the first day you are to have a holy convocation, a Mikra Kadesh, and you should do... no regular work instead you are to present an offering made by fire to Yahweh for seven days on the seventh day is a holy convocation when you are to do no regular work okay so
Okay. So anyway, she... <laughs> too much going on. She, she's, he says, don't do this until I rise. Well, you know what? The thing is, is after Passover, when they, the sheaves that they waved was actually the first fruits, and they could not partake of the, bed, the, the bread and of any new grain until they had been waved. And the waving was so that Yahweh would accept his people. The word accept would, would be to show favor to his people. Yeshua point, uh, uh, presented himself before the Father as the first fruits and the waving before him so that his people would be accepted. I don't know about you. It would seem to me that he's not done away with any of that stuff. See, he fulfilled it. We see him in these festivals. That's what they were supposed to see all along. They were supposed to be to see Yahweh's salvation for his people. From start to finish. You know what? That's so amazing to me. Because he wouldn't even let her partake of anything to do with him until he had made sure that he'd gone before the Father and that the, the grain offering had been accepted so that they would all find favor with Yahweh. We talk in, in Torah about the man's responsibility in his household. I want, to, I want to take another look at this on this side of it, okay, because he is the bridegroom. He was protecting the bride from partaking of something that would not find favor with Yahweh so that he could present himself and, and come back and, and, and they would be, have been accepted and found favor and it would have been part of what? Him presenting him, the bride to himself without spot or wrinkle. He was leading his people to that place to where he could present to his father a bride that was pure. So is there another kingdom coming? Yes, there is. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. Let's look at verses um, 6 through 8 in chapter 1. So when they had come together, they asked him, Master, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? See, they understood that there would be a kingdom that comes physically. So they're asking him, is this the time? They knew that, so, that this was really significant. They knew what had happened. And so they're saying, okay, now is the time for the kingdom to be restored physically upon the earth. Okay? And he says, that's not for you to know. He said to them, it's not for you to know times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, 
but you will receive power when the, when the, the Ruach HaKadosh has come on you, and you will be my witnesses to the Jerusalem in all of Judea and Samaria. You need to look at this. Now in Yeshua's final appearance to them, they, he, they were asked about this restoration of the kingdom. And he tells them that you're going to receive this power on high, and you'll know when the power on high comes because you'll become my witnesses of truth. <laughs> Did you get this? He said, he said, I was born, I came to this world, I came into this world to be a witness to truth. And they were about to receive the spirit of truth that he promised so that we would become witnesses to the truth. We saw in, in Daniel chapter 7 that there was a kingdom that he was going to set on. Let's go back to Revelation 20. Starting at verse 4 and going through 6. Then I saw thrones, and people seated on them were given authority to judge. I also saw the people who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Yeshua and because of, of, of Yahweh's word who had not worshipped the beast or his image and who had, who had not received the mark on their foreheads or on their hands. They, they came to life and reigned with the Messiah for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come, come to life until the thousand years were completed. Then the first resurrection, that was the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of, of Yahweh and of the Messiah, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. We find him coming back in, Re in Revelation uh, chapter 19, starting in verse 11. He returns. And he returns because he defeats his enemy. And he seats, he's seated on a throne here on earth. Guess where, by the way? Jerusalem, right? The, the word is not only going forth from, from the, 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 the hearts of his people where he seats, where his kingdom is now, but it's going to go forth from Jerusalem as he rules over a thousand, for a thousand years. Along with us. I'm excited. Are you? Well, say so. Get loud out here. Good grief. We have to raise the dead here. There's two pastors talking. I'll just throw this in here. Two pastors were talking. And one of the pastors says, I don't, I don't know about you. But he says, during the resurrection, he says, we're going to go first. The other pastor looks at him and says, kind of baloney theology do you have? And he says, how do you figure that out? He says, because it says in Scripture that the dead in Messiah will rise first. <laughs> okay, there you go. I'm done. <laughs> so, I'm hoping that that filled in some of the puzzle in this story. Because you know what? If you don't, if you're not able to follow it all the way through, you need to stop right there. Because there's, there's more of the puzzle that comes together and gives you a larger picture of what it is he's doing and has done. Listen, the other thing I want you to know is that you're not without power. If the throne of Yahweh, of Yeshua, is inside you, then you have access to that throne 
and you have every power that comes from his authority his, and his throne. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to get real. Because you know what? what the, the things that we're seeing, you know the defeats that we're experiencing? It isn't, it isn't because he's not powerful. It's because we don't have a vision for what really is. Man, can you imagine if his people ever got their eyes open to the truth that he's given us? What would it look like? What would that be like? It'd probably be so amazing that people just walking through the doors would get healed without anybody even saying anything. Demons wouldn't be able to attach themselves because the, where the people are was so holy that they can't go on that ground. What would it look like? Any questions, comments? Raise your hand. I love it. What? When you ex explain the kingdom is now, and it's not really a new kingdom that's coming, but the kingdom will come down to earth itself and rule over all the earth. But we are in the kingdom now. And, 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 and that's the only time we ever have a fear or a worry is because we lose track of that. <laughs> we're, we're in his kingdom, man. And his angels fight for us, I mean, today. And these feasts that we go through, a lot of people, well, we're practicing, we'll get it right. Someday. But really, when we participate them here, our, our spirit in heaven, we are participating in an actual feast in heaven. It just hasn't came to earth where all the earth is participating with us. But... The angels are participating in these feasts with us right now, today. It's real. It's happening. He is alive. He's not dead. He rules in, in us. Well, let's, let's put it this way, okay? In Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, and I believe that writer to be Paul, at least he dictated it, um, it says this. He says that the tabernacle and all the things that were go along with the tabernacle were actually a shadow of the things in the heavenlies. Do you suppose that, that we're supposed to be the same thing when he's sitting on the throne of our hearts? Is the, we're supposed to be a shadow of the things that are taking place in the heavenlies? Okay, you, you didn't get that. Can you imagine? We're supposed to be following, and he's supposed to be leading. We're supposed to be following his plan and what, he, what takes place daily in the heavenlies. I, I see a difficulty with the kingdom, understanding the concept of the kingdom in that we have a king who is the final authority because we're not raised that way in this culture. We're raised that... Kingdoms and monarchs, monarchies are an antithesis to healthy life and a good culture. So to try to twist our brain around to really recognize this kingdom with its court system and its um, jurisdictions and the whole processes that goes with it, it um, it's, it's hard. And then have to apply it to our own life. It's like walking, walking into walls everywhere you go. Okay, um, what I was thinking about is, I guess what really stuck out is the fact that the kingdom is in us, and so often we hear believers say, why don't we see miracles today? Why don't, why, and I think the biggest thing for me is, it's about feeling, 
well, God's not going to do that because in me because I'm not worthy. And that is just a straight out, in my opinion, a lie of Satan. We are worthy because of who Jesus is, not on our own merit. And we have the power. So, like you said, start acting like it. And that's something that I'm taking home with me today. I was reminded uh, when you were saying that um, about what you bind on earth should be bound in heaven. The things that are done here will be accomplished there as well. I really like <clears throat> when you were sharing that the kingdom is in us. I think in this day and world, 21st century, I think we are so distracted with all the new technology, with all the with everything all around us, that we don't stop and just live out what God, each and every single person, what God has taught each one of us, and then live that out to the best of our ability. We want to learn something more. We want to learn something new. We want to, we're always like, we don't stop and take time and just be with him and then be what we only know to, you know, what he's taught us, to live that out. And then as he shows us more, that one thing about Barabbas, it's, isn't it like, uh, I, I, I learned this from another teacher, Barabbas, doesn't that mean son, Bar, son of the father, Abba? When they wanted Barabbas instead of Yeshua, the innocent one, they wanted the wrong son. But to me, I saw that as another sign, as another picture of us. He let us go free. We're the Barabbas. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Deb, Deb Blair here, and then David back there, and then up there. <laughs> um, I see I see miracles every day from a butterfly to a flower to the birth of a child there are miracles every single day and I think some people think that a miracle is only something just spectacular just out of this world and no denying that is a miracle as well. But every day that we live is a miracle. That God gives us another day to live for him is a miracle. Amen. David, David, David back there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are mentioning first fruits. When Yeshua offered the first fruits, the waving of the Omer, he... He offered up the waving of seed heads, and that seed represents the seed that's planted in our hearts where the kingdom begins within us, when it comes alive within us. And in relation to Tazriah and all these laws of clean, being clean and, and being sanctified before Yahweh, and if you become unclean, how to get clean? Well, this is how we know that we are clean, and we have the seed of the Messiah in us in First Peter 123 says now that you have purified your souls in obedience to the truth when you obey the truth that is within you the kingdom is within you the truth reigns in you the seed of the word begins to come alive in you and you obey that word you follow that your word you walk in that word how do you know that you're walking in that word you're obeying the truth leading to sincere brotherly love love one another fervently from a pure heart that's how you know that the seed, the kingdom is within you, and it's growing, and you are following, you're being led by the Spirit. When you love one another, and you love one another fervently, hallelujah, as you love him, hallelujah. You have been born again, not from perishable or corruptible seed, but imperishable, incorruptible seed, through the living and enduring word of Elohim. The seed is the word, hallelujah, and it's incorruptible. When you follow the word, you will always do it right. When you are led by the spirit, you cannot fail to do the right thing and to love with a pure heart and, and love sincerely without hypocrisy, but love in truth, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. Um, yeah, and that, that goes along with what I was about to say about the, um, when the Messiah said, "Don't touch me yet, until until I have received this, uh, until you have received 
you know, you basically have to wait for to receive the spirit in Yerushalayim. And that the spirit, which is the set apart spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, is the spirit of truth. We know that that the, the spirit is truth. And how can you learn? You, we can't have the, the kingdom manifested to us until we understand, until we receive that spirit of truth and understand the truth. Only then can the kingdom come about once you understand the truth of the kingdom. And that's why the Messiah says, the kingdom is at hand, or the kingdom is offered. He's offering it to us, but we have to be willing to hear it and to understand what the truth of that kingdom is. And then only then, once we understand the truth of the kingdom, can the kingdom truly manifest within us and on the earth as in, as in the, you know, the Shemaim. I was thinking the same thing. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, which means within our grasp. But what did he say right before that? Repent. That's one of the reasons we don't enter in. We have to see the truth, we have to understand it, and then we have to repent. Both John the Baptist and Yeshua said the same thing. So to get that kingdom in us, and I think some of the reasons we don't walk in it with maybe more signs and miracles, as was mentioned, is because we aren't walking a life of repentance and obedience, total submission and obedience. When we see the wrong, if we don't repent, and we stand, we're stubborn, stiff-necked, somehow, he said, and if we don't do that, we don't tend to walk in it. We tend to get off base, and, and God does, his power isn't there. So, But as his people now are repenting and coming together, I don't know if any of you know, but in, his, in Los Angeles right now, the Azusa Now movement is going on. They've been praying, I think it's yesterday and today, it's live stream on uh, god.tv slash uh, life. And it's awesome. It's bringing, they're blowing shofars, they're, they're having the Native Americans there, they're bringing unity around the world, uh, calling on it. It's, a, it's really a prophetic thing going on. And it's repentance, always repentance. I was trying to find the address, but I couldn't. Uh, it, one of the scriptures that you gave um, was about um, being healed. Uh, and I think that's exactly what she was saying there. The miracles is that we recognize the kingdom in us, and he gave us everything that we need for a godly life. And Jesus himself said to the Pharisees, do I say, pick up your mat and walk? or be healed. The healing is the great miracle. We don't have to sin anymore. It's a choice. And so it's what you're saying. We need to open up our eyes and understand that we do not have to sin anymore. And, and I believe we will see the miracles when we quit having to repent. We need to stop and believe. One of the things that, <clears throat> quickly here, because we're, one of the things that we need to remember is that um, the sins that we're holding on to that we don't want to face, and most of that has to do with relationship stuff, it's those things that are holding us from actually seeing the kingdom within us. We need to, we need to, to step out and realize that, that forgiveness is huge, and it, forgiveness starts when you go to a person and begin to mend those fences that's been torn down. Um, in fact, it doesn't take the person that did the wrong to come, okay, because Scripture clearly says that if, you're, if you go to the altar and you have an offering and you, while there, remember that somebody has something against you, leave your offering, go settle that matter, and then come back and give your offering. So whatever it is that we're afraid to face, we're not understanding that that's holding us back from this greatness that Yahweh wants within our lives. Okay? Um, and that's, that's a really important issue. And, there, you know, when you, when you look at it, there's, there's a lot of things that I've had to face. Man, I did not want to face. I just didn't want to face them. And most of it had to do with anything emotional. I hate that. You know, and um, and the the idea of well, we really need to have a talk. No, we don't. You know, that was my attitude, right? 
but I found out that that, that was holding me back from greater things. And so, uh, it, and actually, Yahweh pulled me up short before I even entered ministry. I'd finished seminary, and before I could actually go to a, a congregation, he said, you need to go fix this with your mother. And so, off to Lebanon I went, <laughs> you know. And it wasn't easy because I didn't want to face her. I didn't want to do, do those things. I didn't even want to talk about it, you know. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, once I did, then I was released to, to, to go into a congregation and begin to pastor there. So it, it's vitally important, vitally important. Well, how many of you would like to, um, to be blessed? Why don't you stand up? And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, tell Aaron and his sons how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, may Yahweh bless you and protect you. May Yahweh make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh look with favor on you and give you shalom. In this way, they will pronounce my name over the Israelites and I will bless them. Father, we thank you for the time that you've given us today to just open your word. And we just praise you and thank you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. If you have a seat, uh, David will come forth.